relationship with uh, Duck Rider was fading when he wasn't, for example, announced into a France team last year. And would, people assumed that he would be moving on. But he's also um, had some you know, health issues, and, uh, mm. bad luck on the bike. He's crashed a few number of you know, yeah, uh, key points in the season, mm. missed opportunities in the last few years. Let's start with Mark. Has he passed his best? Or are we going to see him? Winning we, another five stages of the Tour de France <laughs> in 2020. That'd be quite nice if he did, wouldn't it? You know, who, who knows what's going to happen? You know, I think anybody who has experienced Epstein Bar and you and you you sort of have that time out, uh, and, and you know you're not doing the quality of work like you do, like they have to do, uh, and also the knocks and the concussion. And you know, you add it all together, it's quite obvious what's happening. The one thing I, I totally and utterly stand by: you, there was a super super athlete. He's won. What, 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 how many 30 stages of the tour or something you know you don't just do that off the back of nothing mm-hmm. and that doesn't just disappear it doesn't disappear overnight and something I've been saying to him is you know he's not old he's just experienced and there's a total different you know he's not an old man he's 34 he's you know he's a young man still um, you get to an age and you start to you know at, at an elite sport you start to sort of fade away in some areas but it depends how hard you want to work mm. and I think if people really are truly dedicated to themselves to to work hard, then, and you don't lose the talent, not 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 the pure physical talent in that sense. You know, it's still there. So I think he can still win. You know, one of the things he's had over the last few years is, is pressure with all the other things. The worst thing we can do is is actually put the pressure on him in that sense. So we're working closely with him about just getting back to back to your best mm. and about winning a bike race. He, he's a winner, so you can talk clearly about winning. Uh, but if you sort of, if we pitched it out and say, right, you've got to be here to ride the Tour de France to do, you know, it's about get, jumping through hoops, we'd kill it. So uh, this is about, it's all about him working hard, making sure he, A, he doesn't have any excuses, but, you know, really supporting him like we, like we should do. Like what our job is to do, you know, we're full time to support athletes, that's it. Mm-hmm. And that's what we should be doing and that's what we are doing. And he's working hard, you know, so... Who knows? He, he starts racing in Saudi Arabia, so hopefully, you know, there's a good opportunity there to win straight away if he wants it. You spent some time with him in Spain just last week, so yeah. you know how he's travelling. Can you just talk about his his top end speed? Is it some? Yeah, it's, it's it's getting there. It's getting back. Anybody who's had Epstein Barr or Glenn's and Fever, you, you you feel like you've got a limiter on the on the top gear. You know, you go into you, you just can't get into your top gear. You're always stuck in third or fourth, or you just can't change into the bigger gear. Mm. It doesn't matter how you feel like you're trying full gas, but you just can't go. He, he he's totally over that now. He's able to go real deep in the training. He's able to hurt himself, and he's able to back up the days and do it day in day out. And so we had a two week camp, and he actually got better and better each day. That's why he was, he's so good at Grand Tours because he can back up. His recovery is really really good. He's got a supernatural sort of uh, recovery talent. So. Um, if you ask me right here and now, can he win? Yeah, I think he can win. Yeah. If you ask me, can he win the stage in the Tour de France? We'll see. Who knows? And the reason why I say that a little bit is, you know, you've got to be realistic and think about you and last night, Viviana. You know, there's some really good young guys around. You know, and, and you know, Sam Bennett, you know, um, they're all really, really super talented bike riders. So, you, you, you know, I, th- I think the, the world for the last two years has moved into a slightly different space. We talk a lot so much about Epton Bar because another bike rider who you've worked closely with as well, who suffered the same and with similar circumstances, and that is Nick Rogers. Mm. For both Mark and for Michael, Mm. the illness came more or less around the time they became parents. And Mm. I think that that's sort of, it's that um, external uh, forces yeah. That come. Yeah, sure. That yeah. do influence the performance yeah. of an elite. Oh, absolutely. I think you know, um, people, you know, moving on and having families. It's it's massive, isn't it? Yeah. You know, huge. I think it's a huge area of um, of extra stress. You know, the whole relationship with wife or girlfriend or whatever just totally changes the dynamics, doesn't it? You know, we all know that. Um, and to the point where you know we've got a couple of key riders this year who are going to become parents for the first time. And to me, it's a critical moment. We've got to support them, you know, and um, and, and try and try and give them all we can, really, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, t- it does change things. I think it's a massive, massive difference. Yeah. And it can't be ignored, in my raise. No, no. We consider these people to be sort of these 
elite specimens who yes, have yeah. no external distractions. But once you're a father, you don't walk away from that. No, so that's, that's I think as well, um, you know, everybody takes that on differently as well, don't they? You know, and I think it depends what support network they've got at home and and everything. So yeah, yeah, no, you're right. It's a real, you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure there's a direct correlation to them getting the virus at that point, but. Oh, no, I the, don't want to blame yeah, the children no. for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, you know, the, I think, I, you know, Epstein-Barr is, is, you know, is, is related to a stress mm. um, point as well. Uh, so I think it's quite, it's quite a valid thing. It's, it's, it's the only thing where, in my time working with Mark Cavendish, where I've actually said, listen, in my own personal life, it affected me. I had it as well, oh. Epstein-Barr. And, and, you know, it knocked me out for a year and a half. You got kids? It, this was way before I had kids. Okay. Actually, so yeah, way before I had kids. But you know, so so when he was talking about this uh, limiter, he just can't seem to push. You know, you feel good for a week to, and then you, you get a cold and a sore throat on your back. I I, I was like, I totally relate to, and I, I get it. I fully understand, and, and it definitely helped him. I think mm. to you know, because he knew I understood, and it was the same with me. He, I was working with Mick Rogers when he had a, a bout of it as well, and you know, so I think it's, I think that's helped our relationship with Mark. Yeah. Our relationship, yeah. Mick managed his, I know, with the, more or less taking the diet of a celiac, where he went mm. gluten yeah. free, or stopped with pasta, yeah. had yeah. special mints in his drink bottle. Mm. Are you applying those lessons to Mark? Uh, he's tried different things, you know, I think when you're in a desperate state, you try bloody everything. Mm. You know, sometimes then that adds extra stress, which is the worst thing. So. Mm. I mean, um, you know, uh, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't managed very well. Mm-hmm. And another assumption that might be made about Mark Cavendish is because he has this uh, this pedigree and this history of the sport mm-hmm. and this uh, superstar status is that he's going to be an expensive purchase. Uh, I know there's fucking loads of money being thrown at your team. Was, <laughs> What's the story with Mark's contract? Did it um, was it was it prepared, you know, well um, in advance, or no, has it sort of evolved into the it evolved budget? really? And I think um, you know the the bottom line is you know we don't have uh, a huge budget in this team, but we have enough to do what we want to do, and that's quite clear. Um, I think uh, you know we we want to pay market value for people. Mm. And I think we don't we are paying market value for absolutely every single one of our athletes. So I think it's you know it's a pretty easy formula really. If you look at it like that, you know we're not trying to diddle people. We're not trying to, you know, it will pay what they're worth. And and but, it, but you know, the value of the commitment to people and the value of the the you know the roll your sleeves up and get stuck in attitude, you know that's what it's really about. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. And and you know I've said it in quite a few interviews. This isn't mates rates for calf or it wasn't a it wasn't a. Um, or we feel sorry for you, mate. He, 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 this is a full on. Let's go for it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it can work. It may not work, but we're going to go for it. And and I can't see why anybody would say that's a bad thing. You know, because it's you know we're just going for it with a guy who is phenomenal. He's a great ambassador for for McLaren. I think he's a great ambassador for our sport. He's been absolutely sensational with our young riders so far. Um, so brilliant. You know, bring it on. It's a value proposition. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, well, you know, if you actually think about the, the, um, what that brings to a team and the value of that, it totally outweighs anything that you're going to pay him in that sense. Yeah, 100%. And he's he's in a completely different space. He, I mean, he's like lo- absolutely loving it. I can I can honestly say that he's loving this at the moment. You know, at the end of the day, people do get to a certain point in life where you start to descend slower because you're like, well, you know, you've got other responsibilities. And I've sort of said to him, you know, if you if you've got to a point where you you can no longer fight in the fight, because it is dangerous. We know, you know, when they have them big crashes, you know, um, just tell me. It's not a problem. Tell me, and we'll crack on with something else. Because I think he can add value in other areas. The moment you dismiss the potential of Mark Cavendish is the moment he will come out and win every bike race he <laughs> yeah, <hope so. laughs> We'll see. You know, I mean, there's this. You know, people sort of saying, "Oh, maybe you know, he wins one and it just sort of unfolds." Then you know, it just mm-hmm. goes on and on. But maybe who knows? I really don't know. It's like, you know, all I know is what I know right this second, sat in this seat, and he's in a good place and he's moving forward. So yeah. you can't ask for any more for the guy. 
we so used to seeing him throw the big dress salute, but the standout image for me in his life, Cavendish, was a couple of years ago. I was on the back of a motorbike going to the Pyrenees and stage of the Tour de France. <coughs> and we were just reaching the foothills and we went to a descent and we were flying. We were going over 100 kilometers an hour. And um, Mark came by as though we were well, easily faster than the motorbike. Yeah, yeah. And he was about to dip down this hill. And he was in excess of 100 k an hour, reaching for food in his pockets. And the, the, he seemed utterly at ease. Yeah, it yeah. Was an, it, it's a, an image that I've never relayed mm. in the story, but mm. I, I wish that I'd captured it on camera mm. because you see these people at yeah. the peak of their powers, at the peak of their ability on mm. fire. And I marvel at them. Yeah, well, it's phenomenal, isn't it? You know, and it's a great privilege that you're in that position, isn't it, to see some of that. And I think, you know, that's what I think that we should be thinking as a sport: is how can we bring that moments to the wider audience and and share that with people? You know, because I think that, that exactly that is what we're about, isn't it? And seeing them heroes in, in a way, sort of doing what they do best, you know. They make it look easy, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>